Hey everybody, uh, Colin here, and I'm back with another video this uh, this week. Um, this one is the old records and books and antiques one that I've been doing for a couple of months or however many months now. Um, thanks for listening to my sad story on the uh, record stories, and. I will still be doing those and these two, but the record stories I'm just kind of kind of throw in here and there whenever I uh, feel like it because um, well I don't want to do too many videos and get everybody all bored, <laughs> all forty of you. Anyway, uh, I have some records here. Oh, and. Uh, Thanks. I'm I'm finally past uh, 500 subscriptions. I think I'm at 503 or something like that. After what well, seems like years, maybe it's been like dang, it's it's been more than five years. I think that I started doing when I started doing these. Um, I can't remember. It's been so long ago, and I've got like 500 videos or something, and. I would have had more than that, but I uh, erased a bunch of them that I didn't really think were relevant anymore. And I probably still will go through them again sometime and take out some others that um, I just don't think anybody's watching or should be there. But anyway, thanks a lot. And uh, I don't I don't think I'm going to do a contest. Uh, I just don't have enough people watching that actually would make a video. And I'm, I'm lately I've been really bad about um, mailing out prizes that I'm supposed to be doing and that sort of thing. So I might do another one in the future, just not for this 500 videos uh, subscriptions thing, um, because most of those people I think don't even watch my videos. The percentage thing, you know, only like a, so much. A, 5% probably watch my videos if even that because I've been getting like 40 50 views and 10 comments and I do appreciate all of your comments the people that have stuck with me through all these years of craziness and sadness and madness and scariness and just plain old stupid stuff I do on here sometimes um, I know the way I act sometimes might throw people off but that's just the way I am. I get pretty humorous sometimes, and who doesn't like to laugh? Well, I hope everybody does. But anyway, I have a record here, uh, The Soft Machine. And I do believe I might already have this, but I picked it up anyway because I have a couple of their other albums. And I couldn't remember if I had this or not, but this is a pretty good record. Um, it kind of... It's, it's kind of a psych album together with prog rock, I would think. Kind of a mixture. I'm not exactly sure how to describe it, but um, check some of these videos out on YouTube. Uh, most of, A lot of times I just buy stuff blindly and I find things that I like, like these guys. And then other times if I see some other video somewhere and... I, I go to YouTube and check out a few songs or videos first before I buy an album. Um, but most of the time I just go to the record store and blindly buy something I think is interesting. And this is one of those that I just happened to pick up before. Um, next we have Isaac Hayes. Uh, Hot Buttered Soul. Now, I didn't know too much about Isaac Hayes other than uh, wasn't he uh, the chef in South Park? Unless I'm thinking of somebody else. Um, but uh, I decided to check him out because I don't have any Isaac Hayes records. And I hope I didn't already show this on my last video. But <laughs> Hot Buttered Soul. Uh, I really, this is a very good album. Uh, really funky. Um, soulful music and I highly recommend this record if you don't already have it and I'm going to be looking for some more of his other records of this time period because I just really enjoyed this and I, I recommend you guys get it if you don't already have one um, 
And next, here's a new one. Here's one of those I just blindly bought. Now, here we have um, David B Byrne or Byron Amer uh, American Utopia. <laughs> um, now, you all might remember him from the Talking Heads. Um, and he hasn't really been around too much musically that I know of because he started getting into film directing and uh, documentary, documentaries. Is that a word that <laughs> that uh, he started doing um, this record here um, it's not really burning down the house uh, I did like it uh, it's not gonna be something I'm gonna play over and over um, it's not burning down the house like I said it's more like toilet papering the tree outside of the house maybe <laughs> or, or <laughs> throwing an egg at the house or a baseball and breaking the window but it's not burning down the whole house that was one of the talking head songs <laughs> anyway um but i did enjoy this um i, I want to kind of say it sounds like something that would be in a documentary um i pictured tom hanks uh going back to college after he gets uh, fired from um, to door world or uh, floor world or somewhere and he joins a gang of moped riding uh, miscreants oh wait that's <laughs> I think that's already a movie but it's it reminded me of something like that you know uh, yeah uh, uh, this is one of those go watch a video on YouTube or something before you get it uh, it is a, it's not a great record, but it's good. And next we just have some comics here. Um, the 100 page uh, uh, D DC, the House of Mystery, Do You Dare Enter? And that's, I've always, I got quite a big collection of these um, vintage horror comics now, enough to fill a whole comic box. But I just enjoy these uh, stuff from my when I when I was a kid this was already probably an antique and next we have Red Wolf now I've never read any of these but I decided to get one when I seen it because I read where uh, Marvel is bringing back this character into the comics uh, Native American sort of hero back in the western days I assume um, and since the success of Black Panther here maybe they will bring out a Red Wolf movie wouldn't that be exciting um, I just hope they don't uh, give it I hope they give it a good treatment um, I did go and see Black Panther um, I I liked it I would say I, I didn't love it um, I just think the whole premise of this guy being from some African continent that nobody really knows about and they're they've they're holding some really powerful material that nobody else knows about. They have spaceships and all kinds of powerful weapons and stuff and nobody knows. Um, plus I kept waiting for Eddie Murphy to pop up for some reason. I, I, for some reason, coming to America kept popping in my head off and on throughout that movie. <laughs> but uh, it was a good movie, uh, but I hope they make one about Red Wolf. Um, here we have some Western comics that I used to get when I was in uh, grade school, and that's Jonah Hex. These were... Um, he was a western type gunslinger heroish type character uh here it says draw hex we paid for a killing and we ain't we aim to get one <laughs> but that's jonah hex and i have several here here's jonah getting ready to fight a dirty engine or something right there now one thing i have to say about jonah hex i like the older jonah hex later on in the 80s they tried to turn it into like a science fiction 
Western, and I didn't quite, I stopped reading them after that, and that I didn't really enjoy that movie they came out with, uh, what is that, the 90s or early 2000s or sometime they came out with Jonah Hex and it was just terrible. Uh, anyway, here we have Jonah Hex. Uh, the death, what's it say? A duel in the desert ends in the death of a bounty hunter and somebody's reaching up out of some quicksand or some dirty water there with the six shooter ready to blast him and here we have Jonah Hex with a damsel in distress and one of them's gonna die or both uh, these were under the weird western you're a fool Bigfoot I can plug you long before that tomahawk hits me and he's like mmm Kimosabe then draw Hex and see who does great spirit claim actually the Indian on this uh, speaks better English than him <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we have some books here. Uh, Elliot Nass, The Untouchables. Uh, I really enjoyed this TV show. If you remember, there was a TV show. I believe it was in the, I'm going to say, the 50s. Or I'm at, I'm, the 40s or 50s. I can't remember how old it is. It might even be the 60s, but it was in black and white. Uh, it had Robert Stack, is that his name that's in it? He went on to do um, Unsolved Mysteries series, which he got more famous for than being in the TV show here. But this is about the Al Capone days and how he fought them. And uh, Eventually, he, he kind of had a sad life, Elliot Ness, didn't he? Didn't he commit suicide because the stress just got to him so much? He was trying to hunt some serial killer and he couldn't find him and blah, blah, blah. Uh, Murder in Lima. Eyewitness. The story of a man who tracked down his own murderer. The clue of the forgotten murder. How many of those? There's still a lot of unsolved crimes all over the place. Um, we'll read oh, off the back of this. Lima, the throbbing southern city of mystery of ancient adobe walls and blood-stained catacombs, of barbarism, of barbarism and luxury, the city where tempers flare and passions reach the boiling point to explode in intrigue and murder. Bob Johnson, crack Hollywood newspaper man, finds the excitement he was looking for on a lush Lima vacation, a tempting beauty who mixed fatal business with her pleasure. A Mexican movie queen with a taste for dangerous men and peculiar, peculiarly spiked cocktails. And Mr. Big of the Lima underworld, whose unholy plans allowed no room from an inquiring reporter. Now, I like the way they say crack Hollywood newspaper men, because sometimes, uh, every now and then, uh, not recently, I would answer the phone where I work and... I work in a kitchen and somebody would say oh we need some uh sandwiches or something at so-and-so building and i'm like we're right on it we'll send over a crack team of oh um, curtis hall food service workers immediately sir <laughs> i would get a kick out, of, kick out of that anyway and that's uh pretty much it uh, the last um uh, I have a antique, lastly, and I picked up an old phonograph, uh, and here's a pamphlet for it that came with the photograph. Uh, I won't get into all of this. This uh, over over here, wait, what's one of you? Over here is the one I found, and it was made in Caldwell, Kansas, which uh, I cannot find any information on this company. Um... And this is just the pamphlet describing my unit and everything. Um, I, I believe it was probably made sometime between 1920 and 1930-ish. I'm just kicking a wild guess because I can't find any information on it. Um, I guess back then, uh, the two big phonograph companies were Edison and uh, Victor. And when these big places couldn't produce the phonographs that people the amount that people wanted 
a lot of these little small companies started popping up all over the country around 400 of them i guess even in you know little small towns like caldwell i looked that place up and right now there's only a little over a thousand population there um and for some reason, I guess the Caldwell's where the uh, phonograph was made, and then it must have been uh, sold at this place called Old Trail Cafe, uh, Nuo Phone Phonographs, Lost Springs, Texas. That must have been the store or shop where they were selling them. And I'll kind of throw in, uh, I'll either put in a couple of pictures, which I think I'll just put in some pictures. I was going to do another part of a video but I don't want to drag this out too long I'll just put throw in a couple snapshots of my uh, phone graph that I just recently picked up and uh, that's it Colin over and out and weirdos unite well here I'm back Colin back again and I decided to go ahead and film a little bit of this phone graph uh, here it is, the uh, new O phone that I just picked up. The badge there said it was made in Caldwell, Kansas by the Border Queen Phonograph Company. Now, after I got it home, I discovered that the tone arm was busted in two places. And here I just kind of rigged it together with some duct tape. But this is made out of pot metal, and over time... The old pot metal tends to break down and get very brittle. Um, so I'm going to have to find another tone arm for this, which might be quite difficult. <laughs> but um, right now I've got it uh, to where it will work. Uh, it works fine. It's just that, you know, this looks a little cheesy. And the, the winding handle is over here. Wind it up. And we'll see what happens. I'm just going to play a little bit. Don't get all freaked out because of the needles. Here we go. And that's all we'll do. We'll see if I get a, a copyright on that. Um, but here it is. It has some doors down here where you can store records or whatever you might want to store in there. And that's it. Now, one thing. You know, that needle looks very dangerous. And those of you that don't know, you have to change that every single play. You're supposed to. But me, I try to get at least two plays out of it. And you put a new needle in. New steel needle in on every play. Um, and that's it. That's all I'll talk about this. Thanks for joining me. I hope you didn't get too bored and enjoyed everything. See you later.